Hi, my name is Dr. Alan Barnard. Welcome to episode one of my podcast series. In this podcast series, I'll be sharing insights gained over the past two decades or so through the research and field experience of my lab, Goldert Research Labs. Our vision is to help individuals and organizations make better, faster decisions when it really, really matters. That means we have to understand why people make and often repeat bad decisions. Well, some bad decisions are simply unavoidable and many of those that are avoidable are not consequential. We focus on understanding the causes behind those avoidable and consequential decision mistakes or delays. We partner with leading organizations and academic institutions around the globe to develop and test decision support methods and apps to reduce such avoidable and consequential decision mistakes and delays. Well, our research shows there are four types of mistakes we can make. Number one, we do the wrong things, things that don't help us achieve our goals and often waste our scarcest resources like our limited attention or budget. Number two, we don't do the right things and we end up trapped in this vicious cycle of coming up with explanations of why we didn't and then developing recovery plans and then as a result not having the capacity to actually do what could have helped. Number three, we do the right things wrong. We multitask, we spread our resources too thin, causing everything to take much longer and getting less done. And of course, my favorite, number four, we repeat mistakes, number one and three. We don't seem to learn from experience always. But why do we make these four decision mistakes? Well, one hypothesis is called VUCA. It's an acronym that stands for Increased Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, constraints, and the ambiguity we face when making tough decisions. Another hypothesis is that, yes, even though VUCA makes it more challenging and makes some mistakes simply unavoidable, the real cause of most avoidable and consequential decision mistakes or delays are simply our bad or limiting assumptions and beliefs. And by bad, I don't mean right or wrong. I simply mean helpful or harmful. One of the least helpful or even harmful of these assumptions or beliefs is it's impossible. Why? Henry Ford's beautiful quote provides insights to this question. He famously said, whether you believe you can do something or can't, you are right. If you believe you can, it's really helpful if it makes you try something. And maybe you realize that what you thought was simply impossible is in fact possible just because you tried. You might be wondering why the title of my podcast series is Impossible Unless? Of course, there's a story behind it. Impossible Unless is the name of a simple but incredibly powerful process I developed out of complete necessity. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Certainly, it was true in this case. In May 2007, I was asked to do a presentation to a large group of mine managers at one of the largest coal mines in Africa. They had a major challenge. Their target was 12 million tons per year. After four months into the year, they had produced only slightly over 3 million tons. They were way behind and facing serious risks of paying penalties for non-delivery to contract customers and even worse, facing the risk of another round of layoffs. What to do? Well, the mine manager thought that the problem was that they just didn't have enough capacity, that they had a production bottleneck or constraint. And since I was an expert in applying theory of constraints to organizations with similar challenges, I was involved to teach them about TOC. But their situation was different. They believed that they already were using TOC to de-bottleneck their whole mining operation and that they were doing the best that they can. I realized the slides I was planning to use would not work, so I had to improvise. First, I had to find a way to show them that they did in fact have the management attention and budget, the scarcest resources in any organization, if they simply stopped wasting it. This is mistake number one, on doing things that were not helping them achieve their goal of getting more tons. We had to find a way of what can they stop doing or at least freeze to give them that capacity and budget to start the things that could really help. So I got them to list all the things that they were working on, all the initiatives. Unbelievably, less than five of the almost 100 initiatives they were working on actually could help achieve more tons. 
they were absolutely shocked and they immediately took a decision to stop or freeze those that weren't helping. But how do you overcome a belief that you are already doing the best you can? I drew a graph on a whiteboard. Imagine horizontal axis, the 12 months, vertical axis, the tons. And I drew a straight line from zero to 12 million tons. And I said to him, to catch up, since you are only sitting at 3 million, you should have been at 4 million. We could do some simple calculations to calculate exactly how much each step, all the way from development, drilling, blasting, hauling, and processing, had to achieve to get them back to 12 million by the end of the year. And then I asked the team responsible for the first process, development, the guys that had to make enough ore available to ensure the drag lines were never staffed, how will they achieve the around 1.3 million tons per month they needed to catch up? The frustrated and even angry response, it's impossible. If it was possible, we would be bloody doing it. And then I asked, out of desperation, it's impossible unless, and I just let it hang there. I'm a pretty big guy, six foot five, 220 pounds, but I was pretty intimidated having 60 miners stare at you. After what felt like a few minutes of very uncomfortable silence, the manager of the development finally replied, Okay, I'll play your bloody game, he said. And then proceeded to tell me what he would do if it was his mind, if it was up to them. But that the management team and especially the cost accounting will never agree because it will cost too much money and there was no budget available. Well, at $20 per ton margin, an extra 300,000 tons was worth $6 million of net profit. He realized the plan that he had would cost way less than $6 million and it was approved immediately on the spot. With this simple question, impossible unless, he exposed all the conditions that if it could be put in place, would make the impossible possible. It was a very elegant solution to quickly expose and challenge the many self-limiting assumptions we walk around with. It's impossible. It will cost too much. They will never agree. We just don't have the time. Once these specific limiting conditions or constraints are known, Everybody can contribute to find simple, low-cost ways to make it possible. I simply repeated the process, this question, for each of the remaining processes. It's impossible to achieve 1.3 million tons unless the outcome was incredible. Within just a day, we created a plan, a robust plan, that would allow them not just to recover, but to exceed the 12 million tons. The outcome, the clients were happy. The shareholders were happy and management and employees for the first time in many years received bonuses. So what was the process I discovered you can follow when faced with a similar challenge in your environment to achieve a step change in performance, whether in your organization or in your personal life? Step one, create a target that is so ambitious it triggers you or others to say it's impossible and then ask yourself or them, it's impossible unless when we ask ourselves or somebody else that simple question impossible unless and we slow down our thinking to reflect on it we are allowing our minds to come up with all the reasons why we believe we can't do it the self-limiting assumptions or beliefs and once exposed we and others can challenge them by asking is it really true and even if it is how can we overcome it or how can others overcome it that is the story behind the name of my podcast series, Impossible Unless. In the rest of the podcast series, I'm going to be starting every single episode with the following. It's impossible to achieve some ambitious target unless, and then based on my almost three decades of experience and field testing, I'll share some practical conditions that if you can recreate it, can make the impossible possible. See you on episode two.